In this issue of Real Magic Magazine, we've got a clinic on misdirection. First, John Lovick asks John Carney about simplicity and natural movement. When I was a kid, one of the first really great books was Di Vernon Book of Magic, and he has the cups and balls and, and different things, great tricks in there. And one of the things, the first chapter is the Vernon Touch, and he just breaks down the, the French drop. Now you see people do the French drop, and they, they, they pick it up with the hand that they're going to put it in, put it in position in the other hand so they can take it with the hand that they just held it in. It makes no sense whatsoever, and there's no reason for why did you change hands. There's no misdirection, there's no thought or anything to it. And Vernon was the first guy to say, you know, you maybe pick it up in that position, or you, you pick it up with one hand and then you adjust it in that position, and why are you holding it that way? Maybe you're saying, I, you see that, oh, look at that design there, the, the walking liberty. The, they haven't made those walking liberties in some time, you know, but the thing about, you know, so, so you have a reason to hold that that way, and you de-emphasize, you know, people emphasize the move. They emphasize that moment, so they're emphasizing that's the wrong thing. that's how the trick thing. is done. Yeah, that's a secret. So instead of emphasizing the move, you you emphasize uh, the effect, or you emphasize the, the wrong things. Like, you know, I'm going to take it, so that's the, the Ramsey idea. If you want somebody to look at something, look at it yourself, because you can't misdirect <coughs> someone's attention unless you know where they're looking. You're going to be looking all around the room, just checking their neighbor or something, and right when they look back at you is when you do do the move, right? So you have to focus their attention someplace so you can misdirect it. So if I'm doing this, just talking about it and tapping it on the table and making it look important, people go, "Oh, well, cool, there's something. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen here." And then when you're through doing that, your body relaxes and you look away. So that looking away and that relaxation. To them, as soon as they see you relax and look away, they go, oh, there's nothing less left. He's done with that thought. That's the punctuation there. He's, oh, he's done with that. Okay. And that's when you do it. Also in issue 43, Garrett Thomas discusses misdirection of the mind. It's one of the pet peeves I have often uh, about where we look is when I see magicians use a question for misdirection for something, let's say, like a pass. Right? So we have a card, we put it in the middle, and we want to control that to the top. But I don't want to do the pass while everyone's looking at the cards here. So I'll say, so what was your name? Now what happened there? I asked the question and did the move at the same time. And I think what magicians have evolved this bad habit because they forgot the power of what the question was. The question is supposed to make them blind. And so now, yeah, I controlled the card to the top, but did I really misdirect you enough? Did I get you to look away enough from the card? It would be better if I got the break and then said, so what was your name? Now, that because if I do it while I'm asking the question, if I say, so what was your name? You're not really misdirected yet. Because I realize you can't misdirect the eyes alone. You have to misdirect the mind. Christian Painter shares a mentalism routine using the two-card Monty system with business cards. Cosmo shows us some ridiculous highlights from the Magic Live dealer room. And Tyler Erickson demonstrates a simple transformation drill. So step one, the object is inside of the receptacle. I'm using a cup now, but you could use anything provided they can't clearly see inside there, because that's the motivation for tipping it out. Now when I tip this object out, I'm going to tip it on a very specific trajectory. I want it to roll across, either from lower to upper or straight across, depending. And as it comes into this zone, I want to already have my hand down with the wand. I don't want to tip it out, have to set the wand down and then go over to it. That'll look kind of jumpy. So just as I'm about to throw this out of there, I let the wand rest on the table. So when this comes out, all I have to do is jump forward to grab it. It's that kind of reactionary movement that makes this look much better than the average sleight of hand because people do move like that. One hand jumping in with the other one wouldn't be fast enough. Plus, it's in the appropriate hemisphere, as we talked about before, with the center line. So now, I want to reset this, putting this back inside of the cup. There's my center line. I have every reason in the world to do a transfer, and that's where I'll do a Bobo-style transfer. Finally, I'm catching, throwing the new object in, and also picking up the wand. 
picking up the cup. Also making sure I see, let them see my hand empty as it comes away. The tap of magic, without which nothing would happen. Yeah, right. And there we have it, the transformation. As always, we've got three tricks to teach you. In this issue, they're from Gregory Wilson, Bill Cook, and newcomer Ariel Shrum. Don't forget it, commit it to memory, and toss it back inside. Okay. And go ahead and push it all the way in. Okay? We're gonna mix this up in an unconventional way. So I'm gonna take about half of the cards. And let's take about this many or so, give or take. Uh, that's probably good. About half, right? I'm gonna take face-up cards so you can see them. And we're gonna jam them into the face-down cards. Let's square these guys up. Mix them in. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I want you just to push them all together. All right. So now this is a pretty stressful situation. Your heart rate's rising, You're freaking out bad. <laughs> but just to show you what we have, uh, some face up, face down, it's pretty sloppy. Uh, so do me a favor, I want you to hold your hand out, I'll place them in your hand, and I want you to square them all up. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's in your hands, you push the mess together. We're going to see if we can fix this mess, relieve you of your stress. Okay. Okay? Check this out. If I stop my fingers, every single card will fix itself. Check it out. Every single card completely straightens out, except for one. And with any luck, check it out. We got. That's awesome. There it is. 